Good morning, Mario, and good morning, Switch fans. I've got to get this burning hot red colored tea out the way. We're going to put this right over here and yeah, just get it out the way because today I have something really important, crazy, and cool to show you. We got to decide what is the best Switch for you to buy now that the mystical Tears of the Kingdom OLED is out there. I've got this one to share with you. I've got this one to share with you. I've got this one to share with you. And I've got this old Switch to share with you. So we're going to go through bit by bit and kind of evaluate and rank where they come in in terms of Joy-Con dock and overall package and recommend which one you get going forward for 2023. What's going on, everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Hit that like button if you enjoyed the show and let me know in the comments down below which one you would pick. Money not an option, what would you pick? Let's first establish that a Nintendo Switch these days is $300, a Switch OLED is $350, and then a Nintendo Switch OLED Special Edition is $360. Now, there also are the plain white and neon red, neon blue OLEDs, but we're not going to really cover those because it's kind of covered by like the OG Switch. The big differences, as you know, are you're getting a better screen. It's really kind of the difference, but I want you to see that the bezel is just such a nuisance on the old Switch. I don't know if you can really tell here. I'll try to hold it up in a way that you see, see that dark outline on this Switch right here. You see how it's like there. You see how it's like uh, right there. That That's not present on the OLED. It's very, very fine. In fact, the entire OLED is almost just screen. It's a bigger, better, brighter screen. So right off the bat, I want to tell you that in 2023, with how many hiccups, hangups, and holdbacks the Nintendo Switch has, I don't feel great about recommending the OG Switch. If you're going to go that route, I fully say, you know what? Go and get yourself a Switch Lite. If you want to save money, if you want to just play games on the go, it's $200. I prefer the Switch Lite to just like the regular Switch, especially at $100 less. I know it can't switch, but this console, I feel, is now in the awkward middle stage, especially because of all of these beautiful new versions. Now, you are spending a pretty penny to get this, but the screen is ridiculously good. The brights are brighter. The overall, like, luminosity of the screen is kicked up, and it's a bigger screen. There's no bezel, and I feel like it just makes every game experience better. So with that out of the way, the OLED being the way to go, you do have the $350 white option or the $350 neon option, but I'm going to say straight up, drop 10 extra dollars. You're already making a premium purchase, so drop 10 extra dollars and get one of these nice limited editions, because Nintendo really does them so well. The first thing I want to show you is the embossed back of the Switch console itself. You can see here this one has all sorts of rings. Now the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom Switch itself is actually the most basic and I would rank it dead last. I think for all the glyphs we've seen and all the different Ultra Hand and Zonai symbols and iconography, this circular look, I get it's part of the Tears of the Kingdom logo, but I think it's very boring and repetitive. It kind of looks like you sat your Switch on a bunch of coffee stains. Like, the Switch was the coaster. Now, in second place in terms of back of Switch design is the Splatoon OLED. Now, the Splatoon 1 is very reminiscent of the Splatoon Pro Controller and has really cool uh, embossed graphics of squids and uh, octopi and just all sorts of stickers from the game. I think it's a really nice look. There's a little bit of a raised surface on these guys, but they're really in there super well. And I think it's just a very aesthetically pleasing choice for Nintendo um, to kind of whatever you call it, emboss, emblazon, make these things a part of it as opposed to just like a sticker or something. It, it really looks nice and I really like it. I think this one is really fun, especially with the squid and octopi uh, footprints on the back or hand prints, prints, all prints, I don't know, body prints, all sorts of goofy tentacles going everywhere. Um, this one is really nice, but I got to say that in terms of the Switch console itself, my favorite is the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet because of the color. Now, for some of you, this is going to be way too much over the top and way too insane. But for me, I think having these guys on here, these starters, Foy Coco, uh, and all the different, like, little symbols from the game, um, the icons from the school, it's really, really cool. I think it's really, really fun. I think it packs a punch. And I think if you're going to spend on a limited edition, you better show it off. If you're a Pokemon fan and you picked any of the three starters, which you had to, you know, you're more of a Sprigatito person, you're more of a Quaxley person, boom, you're good to go, you're covered. And it has this nice scarlet-violet theme, so whichever version of the game you pick, you get. I can understand how this would be many of your least favorite and you'd want something simpler, but for me, this is number one. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is the dock, because I think the custom docks might be my favorite part. 
Now, that sounds weird because the dock just sits there, but exactly that. It's always a piece of your living room, your game room, your bedroom, wherever you have it set up. Now, the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is a gold theme with a nice Triforce and pretty iconography in the center, some glyphs on the side, and then we're back to the circle pattern, which actually coalesced nicely with the Joy-Con, the right Joy-Con here, in this gold color, and merges the gold with that. Now, on the back, we actually do have a little bit of iconography. You can see right here and here, there are some more glyphs, um, some more ancient writing, and I think that's a really nice touch to just add to the back. Um, I do think this is a really nice uh, dock, and I will say that this is my me middle favorite dock, my, my second favorite dock. So we'll go with the low-end dock first, and it's low-end for two reasons. One, I think this is just the most in-your-face. Um, I think this one here is a little more aesthetically appealing. It could fit into more of a living room. This is like, we got two giant characters, and it just feels the most gaudy. It also feels the most, most like youthful, and for some that's fine, but it feels a little weird. The other thing I want you to know that I don't know if you can tell, but maybe you can see from the reflection, is that this dock is a shiny, glossy finish, whereas the other docks are a matte finish. Now, there's something like ooh-ah about the glossy finish at first blush that's like really neat. But then I kind of just worry about this scratching, scraping, breaking, cracking, I don't know. And I feel much better about a matte dock like with the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom dock. I do think that there is some, you know, merit to having this shiny dock. And I'm actually really surprised that this console specifically, exclusively, has a shiny dock front. Whereas all the others are matte, but hey, more power to them. They went a little crazy. Uh, there's a little Pokeball in the back, which is kind of cute. It goes right where you're supposed to like feed your HDMI cable or your power cord. Um, so that is a really nice little touch. And this isn't bad by any means, but I do think that my favorite dock of the bunch is the Splatoon dock. And it is subtle, but it has this nice blam, this like ink splat right there that I think is really fun. You can see that it does continue the Joy-Con pattern in the same way that the Zelda console continues the Joy-Con pattern, um, but it's really this just neon splat that sets it apart. Uh, it also is interesting because this one does have the Nintendo Switch logo in the direct center, whereas these two Switch have the Nintendo Switch logo on the top. I don't know if you can see that there. It's, it's very faint and very hard to see. You can kind of get it a little bit in the light. You can see like the filled in section, but the Switch logo is actually not visible on the front of either the Zelda or the Pokemon docks, whereas it is visible on the Splatoon. And I, I don't know, I kind of like that in a weird way. I prefer it. Um, the back, well, this is awkward. The back does have one little piece of this puzzle here, um, which is gonna be a little squid in the same spot where the Pokeball is. And I will say this is the weakest back. All you've got is right here, uh, there is a, let me like get a nice little, that's so hard to see. It's very, very faint. It's just a little squid that I don't even know. Yeah, that's really hard to show up on camera. It's a very faint gray outlined little squid down there. And it is the worst back, but I do think it's the strongest front. And so I do go with this. Now, in terms of the Joy-Con, we're all over the place here. My least favorite set in third place is going to be the Pokemon set. Um, I do think that they're cool colors, but we have had purple Joy-Con and we have had red. Although this is a scarlet -er red, it's not the Mario Odyssey console red, and it's which is right there. Uh, and it's not the neon red from the original Switch release. It's like an in-between orangey red. And I guess that fits the Scarlet name as it should. But these colors are a little bit basic. They've got the, the grape and the, uh, the orange logo for the schools on the front. And then on the back, we do have a continuation of the back of the Switch where we've got Fue Coco and we've got uh, Sprigatito and no Quaxley on the back here, which that alone is a crime. Um, but I think with the writing, like the, all the copyright and, you know, serial numbers and all that, it's a little awkward, it's a little ugly, and I don't love these Joy-Con. I think the fronts having a grape and an orange also are just a bit odd and a bit awkward. It's not my favorite. Now, I have a favorite Joy-Con here, but the favorite Joy-Con doesn't match up with the favorite pair. So the next one in my ranking is going to be the Tears of the Kingdom pair of Joy-Con. These are solid, and I really, really, really like this gold and white Joy-Con. Here, I think the circles look really nice. It's a simple pattern, and I think it works really well as a Joy-Con pattern. While I don't love it on the back of the Switch hardware, I love it on the Joy-Con. And there's somebody's eyes down there, somebody's little weird eyes at the very bottom. 
of the Joy-Con, um, a little piece of iconography, and then closed version of the eyes on the bottom of this, but I really do not like the way that the green looks on this gold. And it's not because the shade, it's because I think this pattern is kind of ugly. It works in terms of like framing the border of the dock, but I think in the center of the Joy-Con, especially since it doesn't reach the edges, it looks a little tacky. You'll notice that both these patterns do not reach the edge of the Joy-Con, and to me it feels like you put a bad sticker on and you misplaced it. So while I love this gold Joy-Con, and in general I love the overall idea of gold Joy-Con, I think it's very ritzy, I think it's very luxurious, I think it's very Zelda, and previously the only way to get something gold was to have like a custom Joy-Con done, that's not something we've ever sold. This is really cool. Gold on the Joy-Con with the white backs, I think are just fantastic, classy, and really, really cool. And there are some glyphs on the back as well at the bottoms there. You can see them almost, they almost look like QR codes, but they're not. I love the gold. The green just to me feels a bit like a poorly placed sticker. So you know where I'm going with this, which is that my favorite Joy-Con set has got to be the Splatoon 3 Joy-Con. I think these are ridiculously cool colors and they have an ombre. Nintendo started off being very neon focused with their Joy-Con and since then they have adjusted and gone with more neutral and basic colors. I love that they went kind of wild. I like to dress really colorful and the ombre aesthetic is very unique. This one going from yellow to green and this one going from purple to blue are just really cool. I wish Nintendo would do more ombre and I think that the designs on here are subtle enough to not be overpowering and overwhelming, kind of like the backs of the Pokemon Joy-Con and the backs of these are by far the best. Having the ink prints, the octopi prints, is just fantastic. What a great touch. What a smart idea. Having them white on the back with those prints is just brilliant and beautiful. It feels perfect for your fingers to rest. And I think they're just great colors on the front. I love these Joy-Con a lot. Probably, honestly, my favorite set of Joy-Con out of all of them. Anything you could buy individually or part of a bundle. I wish you could just pick these up because it's a lot to ask to have to buy a whole Switch just to get an exclusive set of Joy-Con. And I know people sell them individually on eBay, like, oh, just buy the dock, just buy the Joy-Con, but they really ramp up the price to get you to pay a premium to get one piece instead of the whole set. With that being said, which is my favorite set? We've got the Pokemon Switch, we've got the Tears of the Kingdom Switch, and we've got the Splatoon Switch. Now, Obviously, personal preference and game priority matters a lot. Whatever franchise you're the most fan of, probably get that one. But if it's not as easy as that for you, I would say that the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet to me is the bottom of the three. I think it just has the most... The design does not feel as clean. It does not feel as cohesive. It feels like colorful and chaotic, which at times I do like, like on the back of the Switch. But in general, I feel like it's just kind of like braid on here. I feel like this is like, well, we took a Switch and we made it Pokemon instead of we made a Pokemon Switch. Does that make sense? Like, I have a Pikachu 3DS where his face is literally built into the front of the DS and like, that's amazing to me. I feel like this is just more slapped on. I don't feel like they really thought the design out that much. Even though the stickers continues the Splatoon tradition on the back, the front is really not my speed. So that gets third place. Now, between the Tears of the Kingdom and the Splatoon sets, I have a really hard time picking. I'm a much bigger Legend of Zelda fan, and I do think the gold is hot. I also really love the color scheme of the Splatoon set, but I don't have as fond of a place in my heart for Splatoon. I think these are both really excellent designed OLEDs, and it's honestly hard to pick a winner. It's hard to sit here and say which one I absolutely prefer. If I had to make a choice for the group, I would say that this is the best OLED on the market. I think the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom OLED, despite its early leak, despite all of the rumors, actually ends up being a very fancy, fantastic purchase. I think it'll hold value. And even though I'm not the biggest fan of the green, the gold is just so striking, right? We've had all sorts of colors, blues and purples, oranges and yellows and greens, but we've never had gold official Joy-Con and that says so much. The also, the front of the dock is so aesthetically pleasing, I believe and it would go so nicely in an entertainment set, I think this is the winner overall. Like, for the group, this is the winner. But if I had to pick myself, if you're asking me which one I could keep, I could only keep one. Well, I'd probably still keep the Zelda because I think Tears of the Kingdom will have a really special place in my heart. I'd probably keep Tears of the Kingdom even though I think I like right now the color schemes and the subtle design iconography and the Nintendo Switch logo on the front and the footprints on the back of the Splatoon 3 OLED, I think this is like excellent design. From a design standpoint, I think they killed it. I think they made something that feels truly 
handcrafted for this game while still respecting what the Nintendo Switch is. But if I could only keep one for myself, it ends up being this. Even though I like the Joy-Con a little more in Splatoon, even though I like a lot about it, this is freaking Tears of the Kingdom. Nintendo doesn't often do special editions, and I feel like there's so many Pokemon special editions. There have been a lot of Zelda handheld editions as well, let's not forget that. But in terms of like home console stuff, this is freaking sweet. Having a home console Legend of Zelda to associate and bring with Tears of the Kingdom, and I guess Breath of the Wild in a way as well, is awesome. There was not a special Breath of the Wild console. There was a Wind Waker Wii U, but it really wasn't all that well themed. It just kind of had a border. It was black. It was really boring, but this is really fun. This is a really fun, very well designed gold and green Switch, which just is Zelda, right? Those are the colors. That's the way it rolls. And this right here is my recommendation, my favorite of all the Nintendo Switch systems you could go out and buy. This is the one. The regular Switch at 300, I think the screen is worth the 50 bucks. And then I think getting this kind of gold ensemble is absolutely worth $10. And if you are looking for a cheaper option, I think that the Switch Lite is the way to go. I know it can't switch. I know it has some limitations, but this is a darn good feeling system for 200. Like it really is. It's ergonomically nice. It's got the actual real D-pad, which these things still don't have. In case you forgot, we still don't have a real D-pad over on the left Joy-Con. But the Switch Lite does have a real D-pad, so there are some perks there, but all in all, this is the winner. The Zelda Tears of the Kingdom OLED, the one that everybody currently wants, yeah, there's a reason. This is my number one pick in 2023 for the console to get, and I don't think there's going to be any other Switch OLED releases this year. I don't think Pikmin 4 will get one, and we don't even know the rest of the games. If you want to talk about will a Switch 2 release this year, goodness gracious, that's a whole other can of worms, but right now, the Zelda Tears of the Kingdom OLED Gets a huge endorsement, a huge recommendation for me, and I think it's the nicest looking, best system you can buy from Nintendo. Let me know what you think, though, in the comments down below. If you're tracking one down, if you're chasing one down, if you have a different preference, am I wrong about the Pokemon Switch? Let me know in those comments. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay happy, stay positive, everybody. I love you a lot. Until next time, Switch Force, out.